welcome to another episode of Animator Interviews. My name is Evan Vernon. I'm a contributor at Animation for Adults, as well as Animation Nights New York, also known as Annie. For those new to Annie, we are a monthly screening event and yearly festival that celebrates the very best in animation talent. Our artists come from all across the globe, and many have had their work featured at Cannes, Annecy, and other prominent festivals. We receive hundreds of submissions each year, and each year we feature just 20 at our annual Best of Fest. Today I'm joined by one of those 20. Mikkel Odenalu is a Czech animator whose harrowing short, So Far So Close, was chosen by our jury as a Best of Fest winner film. Set in an Arctic wasteland, the film follows a lone wolf as he searches for food. Starving, cold, and desperate, the wolf seems willing to eat anything that comes his way, even if it means hunting another wolf. When a young pup crosses his path, the wolf's integrity is put to the test. Does he kill his own or try to help his defenseless prey? You'll have to watch to find out. Today, Mikkel has kindly agreed to discuss this gripping piece in his artistic career. Today's interview is also public and open to audience questions, which we will address as they come in. Mikkel, thanks for being here. Uh, to kick things off, tell us a bit about your background. What got you into animation? I really loved stop motion films when I was a child. And I remember I was fascinated by Arman Animation Studios and their film um, with Wallace and Gromit. Uh, it was a ground day out. I really loved the idea of cheese on the moon and stuff like this. It was really beautiful. Yeah. And then uh, when I was a teenager, I had a really passion for Jan Schwankmeier's film. So first I wanted to do some uh, more tactile animation. So I started to animate with uh, old toys and uh, after toys uh, with puppets because I was really excited about puppet theater and made also some puppets from clay. And that time I loved uh, very much Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart and that time of period. So this also influenced me a lot. Yeah. But then when I came to university and uh, there was just introduced to me a classical drawing animation. So I really enjoyed this technique. And later I tried it also like digital drawings on Cintiq and stuff. So I have started to uh, combine these two techniques and that's how I do it like until today. Yeah, no, wonderful. I'm sure there's a lot more to that story. Um, but appreciate you giving us kind of the cliff notes there. It's interesting you cited Ardman as kind of an early influence. For those who haven't seen Mikkel's Best of Fest winter film, uh, So Far So Close, it's um, a two-dimensional film. So um, was there something, Mikkel, that kind of inspired you to gravitate more towards 2D animation um, instead of 3D um, or um, stop motion as your chosen medium? Yeah, well, um... I also love like Yuri Norstein's film. I know it's cut out, but it's like more flat. Mm -hmm. uh, the Russian animator. And I really love his tale of tales, like how it looks visually and also the story. But um, I also, I'm very also inspired by documentary about nature, especially from BBC with David Attenborough. Mm -hmm. So that's maybe it's my interest in nature and wildness. And I'm also inspired by music and uh, just listening music and walking in the nature. So just putting this uh, 3D uh, real world into my drawings. That's probably it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You you cited nature as you know something that you're fascinated with, which kind of leads into um my next question. So for those who haven't seen So Far So Close, it's a very gripping 10 minute film. There's no dialogue, but it follows um, a lone wolf um, as he wanders throughout this kind of Siberian tundra. I'm not sure if that's the, the correct um, geographical setting, Mikkel. Yeah, it but, could um, be anywhere in Arctic, actually. Yeah, yeah. the Arctic. So even, even less forgiving then. That's about as cold as it gets. 
But um, yeah, an extremely gripping piece that really just captures a fight to survive. Um, this, this creature is starving to death and uh, searches for food. And at one point, for those who've seen the film, as you know, considers killing and cannibalizing a fellow wolf. And not only that, but a young wolf. Um, so yeah, Mikhail, I guess I got kind of two questions. Tell us a bit about your fascination with, with nature. This seems to be kind of a trope in your portfolio for those who've seen Mikkel's work before that's featured a lot. So what attracts you to nature? And then what inspired this story specifically? For the first question, uh, why I am inspired by nature? It's just me. It's like, like simple answer. Yeah. It's just me and life. It's uh, rough and uh, wild weather and stuff like this. And uh, what inspired my story, uh, like during my time of studies at the university, I was uh, like more and more obsessed with uh, wasteland and landscape in wasteland. And I remember this moment re uh, like correctly. I was listening music in my bed and uh, in my mind, I was just walking through this Arctic uh, nature with earth colors and it was foggy, cold and still unlively and uh, almost abandoned landscape. And then I just uh, saw some creature and it was this white skinny wolf and he was being in real misery. So yeah, that was just, I don't know, it's, um, it was just right time to connect with music and my mind. At least I can say that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and it's, you know, it's something that I guess most passersby would just take for granted if they saw a suffering animal like that. But um, it touched you in some way. I think that's um, a very powerful attestation to your sensitivity and just your, your awareness of the world around you. You know, it's interesting in this film, the wolf, if I'm not mistaken, when it's going after this young cub, considers or tries to kill the cub at first for food um, because it's so yeah. desperate to survive. But there's a shift at, at the end. This, this, this human comes in and takes the, the cub away. Now, I wasn't quite sure what the wolf's motivation was for doing this, but he goes after the human and saves the cub, whether that's because he wanted to eat the cub or there was kind of like a change of heart and he was defending the cub. But is that something that you could um, talk to us a about? Yeah, like when the humans came, he just realized that he should be protect. He should protect this little cub because yeah. it's his own uh, own species. Or yeah. like yeah, yeah. So yeah, that this was the story because he just changed himself and tried to protect this little cub. Yeah, no, absolutely. Well, what you've said right there is really powerful, right? Sometimes desperate situations bring out the worst in us, but they also bring out the best in us. And your title in a way kind of reflects that polarity so far, so close, you know? Yeah. yeah. Very interesting, Mikkel. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, well, I didn't mention this at the beginning of the interview, but Mikkel is still very active in the animation community. He's um, an educator right now. Um, he has his MA from Thomas Bata. So definitely um, a student of his craft. Mikkel, to kind of end this interview, I was wondering if you could tell us, what are you doing now? Are there any projects you're working on? How else are you involving yourself um, in the animation space? So I recently moved to Iceland and I'm working now on two books. Uh, one is for children. Uh, it's about, uh, like I made a lot of illustrations here and wrote a text. And I'm now in process of translating it with my girlfriend, which is Icelandic. And it's about a boy, uh, Ori, who is discovering like Faroe Islands. So also, I know, again, Arctic nature and stuff. Yeah. And uh, beside this, I'm doing uh, some picture book here. It's uh, more about my emotions and like it's not for children now. And I'm painting it like in classical way with acrylic paintings. And uh, yeah, it's picture book with a little bit of text. So that's what I'm doing now. But I also like um, have in my mind some another short animated films. Now I, I will look maybe more closer into details of landscape, for example, stones and stuff and make a story about these. 
Yeah. It's little things. Yeah, the little things. You, 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 you describe them as little things, and that, that might be the way that many people see them. But the way that you capture them, Mikkel, it's very beautiful and profound. Um, thank so thank you so much for sharing your work with us. Thank you so much for taking the time today to speak with us, because we know that you're busy <laughs> um, with your illustrations, apparently, and your other projects going on. But um, uh, for all those attending today and all those listening in, we'll post all of Mikkel's pertinent social media handles and professional websites in the interview description. Be sure to check that out. He has a beautiful Vimeo page with some stunning imagery that just captures the raw beauty of nature. So definitely worth checking out. Mikkel, all the best to you in the future. I think it goes without saying that you've already accomplished a lot by being here and we expect many great things to come down the road. So thank you. Thank you for having me and nice words from you. You take care, Mikkel. Hope to see you soon. You have a good one. Yeah, see you. Bye-bye.